This is our 2016 Airstream Interstate Grand Tour. Uh, we'll do a quick walk around. Uh, at the front, underneath, there's a horn, uh, a real horn, so it uh, actually sounds like a truck rather than a beep beep. Um, there is a light bar down here, which is incredibly useful if you're driving at night. Um, it shines about a kilometer down the road. Uh, otherwise, fairly stock here. There's window trims here, so this allows you to lower the window um, and have some air come in without getting rain. It's raining right now. Uh, otherwise, underneath the van here, there's freshwater tanks. They are now insulated. Uh, prior to this, they would freeze at night. Uh, now they are uh, able to, uh, to camp when it's cold out. You might ask, why would you camp when it's cold? Uh, we were in Dallas at, uh, in March and it was minus eight outside. So at minus eight, all your tanks will freeze. Um, at the back, there is a bicycle carrier um, that allows you to carry bicycle and provide storage underneath. Um, so in here, there's a fair amount of storage uh, inside to carry gear. Uh, and this swing, this entire um, thing swings out of the way. So if we pull on this, the way uh, and make space for uh, for things so you can get it in and out of the back. So now I can open the back doors and this is where we installed shelves. Uh, you'll find that uh, without shelves the Airstream is uh, basically the back becomes a big Jenga box. So uh, we're Rubik's Cube depending on your age. Uh, so we put three shelves in uh, that are matched to the Airstream cabinets. Uh, with hooks on them, so this allows you to, to, uh, to actually have the back very organized. Uh, the bed still folds down. Uh, this is a bra that covers the front. I'll show that later, but it allows you to shade the front from sun. And then rather than the uh, standard um, flooring, we put this warm floor down. Uh, and we also put a grip map on the back, so if, you're, uh, if you need to stand on this for any reason, you won't fall off. Otherwise, it's very slippery. Uh, these are uh, screens for the front doors so that you can pull the blinds down if you're camping and get some airflow through. Uh, otherwise, if you're camping in Ontario uh, and you uh, leave the windows down, you'll find the van is filled with bugs. On this side, you'll find this is the propane shutoff, uh, which you have to crawl down. Um, and if you're crossing a, uh, a tunnel or uh, something that you need to turn off, you need to come down and flick this switch off and on. Uh, we found that to be a real pain, so we put a separate switch inside. Uh, tires are all brand new. Uh, they've got about 12,000 kilometers on them. Um, the step is, uh, I've got it on hold, so normally uh, if you start the engine, it'll pull in. Um, and we'll go inside. There's a uh, screen here, uh, and the screen we thought was great. Uh, when we first uh, uh, used it, we found tons of bugs came inside, and that's because in here, uh, right in this space here, they didn't put anything. So all the bugs get in there, and all the bugs get in up, up here. Uh, so we filled both of those in so that now the screen actually works like a screen. Uh, again, underneath this flooring here, is the Airstream flooring. So you'll find it's really nice flooring to look at. Um, it's fairly difficult to keep clean and it's very, very cold on your feet. Um, so we put in this mat that actually comes out in sections. Um, so now your feet will be warm, uh, which is a big bonus. Uh, and then we did a fair bit of work here. Uh, this right now is the fridge. It's just cooling off. It's at 13 and the freezer is at 18. Uh, those are in Fahrenheit, or sorry, Celsius. So those will be going down. I'll show those again. Uh, this is a fairly major upgrade. This is a, a new Magnum head end. This allows for an automatic generator starter. So if the van gets hot um, or your battery starts to get low, the uh, automatic generator starter will start up. This will also allows you to see, you can see right here, I've just started the van up. 
Uh, so I turn off all, on all the lights and the inverter is on. Um, it is not charging. That green light would be on if it was charging. Uh, and it is now consuming 16 amps. Um, that's a fair amount of power. Uh, with the standard batteries, uh, you would find that you would last about four or eight hours before you need to find an extension cord. Uh, given we doubled the batteries at the back, uh, this will last some time. Uh, but this allows you to see, uh, if I turn this, it allows me to see that my batteries are at 98%. Uh, without this um, uh, upgrade, you have no idea what your battery is. So it's like trying to drive a vehicle without a fuel gauge. Uh, this is the uh, generator. <coughs> Uh, as you'll find out, uh, the generators and airstreams are very loud. Uh, this one is actually very quiet. Uh, the door is open. So that will start up. That will do that automatically. And if I close this door here, you'll find that it's much quieter. So that's a very, very quiet generator uh, that's running now. Um, the normal generator is uh, about three decibels uh, louder, which to your ear is three times the loud, loudness. Um, these are all gate uh, switches to turn off things. You'll find that uh, Airstream has a lot of loads they leave on, uh, which is fine if you're plugged in, but if you're on battery, um, uh, you'll really drain your battery fast. So as, as you see the generator is running now, uh, we'll now find out soon this will uh, start charging. Uh, and we'll put a fair amount of amperage in once the generator warms up. This is the tank gauge here. That works fairly well. Uh, and then this is the saying we're on generator and how much power we're consuming. Uh, as soon as it starts to charge, uh, we'll see this go to uh, um, from negative to positive. And there it is. So now it's started to charge. It's now putting 12 amps in. So if it was sunny out, we would also see how much power is going in. So this is a very, very useful device. Uh, in the back, uh, behind this is a uh, is the automatic generator starter. So if the van gets too hot and you happen to have a dog in here, uh, it will start the air conditioning, start the generator, and start the air conditioning. If your batteries get too low, so if your batteries get to 50%, mine are probably at uh, pretty close to 100. Uh, so if it gets to 50%, I set this to automatically come on. If you drain your batteries below 50%, you will damage your batteries and have to replace them. We also installed up here a, uh, a switch that will come on. So there's a 12 volt switch. Uh, we also upgraded to 12 volts. There's a 12 volt uh, outlet, sorry, not down here, underneath here. Uh, we can see it. Um, that is controlled by this. So this allows you to put a fan in here and when it gets to a certain temperature, the fan will blow air back towards that. That's your bed back there. Right now it's set up as a couch. But without that, all the heat that comes out of this furnace here, uh, you'll find stays back here. Uh, and really what you want is you want the uh, heat back there, which is where you're sleeping uh, or, or just watching TV. Uh, this is one of the Airstream PVs. It, it's not too bad in that it doesn't stick out very much here. Um, and then this is another upgrade we did. We put on an insulated wall there. It zips out very quickly. I've got it done up now just to show you. Uh, but this zips out and it pulls back. That allows you to close the van off very quickly. That whole thing zips out. Um, if you're camping at night, you'll find out that the standard Airstream blinds do not block light. Uh, this actually keeps the cabin either warm or cold. So if you're in the desert uh, and you zip that up, you'll find that this part of the cabin stays very cool uh, while the, while the uh, front stays very hot. Uh, and vice versa, if you're on your way to Florida and you're camping in this, you'll find that the, the front gets very cold and the back stays very warm. Uh, this is the back part here. Uh, so those are the shelves that are installed. This bed will go down uh, very easily. So there's the bed going down and it clears all the shelves. So if you were to make up the bed, this is what it would look like. You would then pull um, uh, this bench down and this bench down. So both of these benches come down. This one folds out, this one folds out, and that folds into a pretty big bed. Okay. These are, uh, the blinds here are automated. Found that they were um, not as useful as you might think, uh, and 
I'll show you the window coverings that we have. Uh, otherwise, everything is, uh, is fairly standard back here. Uh, there is a big TV. So the normal TV here, uh, if I back up, uh, would hang out a fair bit. It would hang out actually much more than this TV does, um, which as you walk back and forth, you tend to hit it. Um, so we move this TV over so that it isn't hanging out. It does look like it's hanging out, but uh, if you come back here, you'll see that it's really not hanging out. The original TV hung out dramatically. Uh, so we remove that one and we put on this one. This is a 32-inch uh, a TV, so a much bigger TV. Um, and it pivots. There's a cover on it. Take that off. So now you've got a, um, a much bigger TV um, that plays Netflix. Uh, it's a Roku TV, so it's, uh, it's awesome. And you'll hear the generator underneath me, I'll turn that off in a minute. But that's a much better uh, TV to watch than the little 24 inch. 24 inch is kind of like watching your iPad. This is much better. Again, it does Netflix. Uh, you can stream from your phone to this TV, which you can't on the original Airstream. So it's a, it's a very nice upgrade if you wanted to watch TV. Um, this is the furnace, uh, which will come on over the air conditioning. Uh, bathroom is in here. Uh, again, we upgraded the floor. So uh, this floor here is much warmer than standing on a standard floor. If you're taking a shower, we'll take that out. But generally, uh, we use that to keep the bathroom fairly clean. Uh, there's your bathroom, the mirror works, the shower works, and the um, the uh, hot water works very well. And then coming back here, uh, fridge uh, here, we added these bars. If you don't add these bars, uh, you'll find that everything in your fridge comes flying out. Uh, we also upgraded the, um, the cabinetry. So you'll find that this drawer in a standard Airstream fits one of these. It's actually smaller than this and a paper towel. Um, this actually pretty much quadruples the space that's in there. So you can have two of these, one being garbage and one recycling, or you have this as storage, and all of your wet supplies goes back here, including the paper towel. Uh, so if you've got uh, camping fuel or dishwasher soap, that all fits in. So that's a, a massive upgrade to, a, to what was an incredible waste of space in the original design. The other thing we did was, this is a standard Airstream drawer. So pardon the, uh, the stuff that's in there, but you'll see the drawer itself is actually quite shallow. Um, so from here to here uh, is open at the back. We've installed this drawer here, but otherwise everything you put in here that sits above here falls out the back of the drawer. And you've wasted all this space. So we added these drawers on top. So like a modern kitchen, um, you've got a, 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 a much better storage system. So we did that one on that drawer on the drawer underneath so you'll find that that suddenly there's way more storage space rather than stacking everything on top um, the other thing we, we did was we upgraded these drawer latches so the drawer latch typically has a three pound latch on it uh, unfortunately a three pound latch is pretty much useless um, and there's the generator now recognize a standard airstream generator would be three times the loudness of that one um, so the, uh, the latches, the three pound latches that they have on these drawers, as you do a right hand turn, right hand turn, uh, you will find that all of these drawers will fly open because none of them will stay closed with a three pound latch. So we upgraded those latches um, so that the drawers stay closed. Um, uh, otherwise the, uh, the sink has really unchanged, uh, that's pretty standard. Um, the cooktop uh, works well. Um, And that gives you an idea of, uh, of the airstream. The windows work well, and this TV is a huge upgrade compared to the original. One of the other upgrades that we did, uh, aside from <clears throat> this uh, insulated wall between the cabin, the driving area and the cabin, uh, which greatly improved the uh, temperature. So if it's hot out or cold out, you're going to notice a difference between this area, <clears throat> this cabin area, um, and the, the living area, so the driver compartment living area, of about 20 degrees. So if it's 
um, freezing in the cabin area, it's 20 degrees in here. If it's 40 degrees in the cabin area, it's 20 degrees in here. So there will be a 20 degree difference between these two just because of this. Um, <clears throat> one of the other things we noticed was uh, Airstream doesn't supply any of these. So these are the window coverings uh, that you can get. Uh, they're about 1400 US for the set. Um, and one side is black and the other side is reflective. So you'll see the reflective side here. Um, and they stay in with, uh, with magnets. So they pop in fairly quickly. Uh, and you'll see that's on the front dash uh, and on the sides. We have these for all of the windows in the Airstream. Uh, they're custom made uh, to do that. Um, and they're very, very useful. So what happens is with, um, with these out, this cabin area, I'll just take two of these out, this cabin area gets incredibly hot. With those installed, uh, the cabin area stays either very cool or very warm, kind of depending on, you know, it's, it's raining outside and you saw how much light just came in. So uh, this, uh, these are very, very useful. So, you know, it takes me about a minute or two to put them back in, uh, but incredibly useful. And we have those for all of them. They are made with, um, with Reflectix on one side. So this is Reflectix, and then there's an insulating um, layer in between. It's actually uh, the same insulating material you'd use in an oven mitt, um, and then something black on the inside. So uh, this black, if you actually use uh, this one on this side, uh, this window, you'll find that that uh, you cannot see inside. So there, I just installed that one there, and you'll find that you can't see on the outside. So if you if you try and look in the outside of this, you will not be able to see in the window at all. Even if you're up close, uh, you can't see at all. You can see the uh, uh, you can see my phone, but you can't see in. So they're very good for blacking out. You know, if you uh, if you want to camp in a city. Uh, these are really important. So aside from this, which is a uh, which is very important, you'll find these having these for all the windows means that nobody can tell you're camping. You could be in the middle of Quebec City uh, or Calgary, and nobody can tell you're camping in the uh, in the van. Uh, similarly, if you're out in the desert uh, and you turn this side to the outside, you will find the van stays much cooler inside. Uh, if it happens to get very cold at night, flip these around uh, and that insulation will help you a lot. So those are some things that we found incredible for, uh, for uh, me being able to be comfortable in the Sprinter uh, and being able to, to camp when, uh, when, you, uh, when you don't want light inside. These are some other upgrades. Uh, so you'll find these uh, seat covers are, um, are on top of the original seat. So the original seats are in great condition. Uh, these seat covers are washable, which is great. Um, you'll find a, uh, a place to store your iPhone. You'll find out that the, uh, the standard um, stereo in an Airstream is pretty much complete junk. Uh, it'll keep rebooting on yourself. Typically when you're trying to get somewhere, uh, this one is awesome. It has uh, Apple AirPlay, um, obviously navigation, uh, so it's a great upgrade. Uh, you know, a stereo that works uh, and a GPS that actually works. Um, it'll charge your phone here. And then we also added a, uh, a battery monitor, or sorry, not battery monitor, tire pressure monitor. So this will cycle through your batteries and it will alarm if you have a leaking uh, tire or a tire that's at high pressure, low pressure, um, uh, or, or it's getting hot. So that was a godsend. Um, we, uh, we had the trailer, which is next to me, uh, attached to us and suddenly one of the trailer wheels alarmed and we found out that what was happening was one of the brakes was dragging. Uh, so thankfully we figured it out before we'd worn the brake out. Our gas mileage was, uh, was not as good as we wanted, um, but more importantly we had to fix the brake, uh, which, was a, which was a good thing. So that's a, that does not come standard in an Airstream or a, a Sprinter. Um, uh, otherwise uh, we, did, uh, we did, as I said, upgrade the horn. Uh, we added uh, the rigid light bar. This is a, uh, a great addition to any Sprinter. Uh, you'll find that the cabin, the driving compartment, is not very well insulated at all. Um, we tint the windows, um, but you'll find that uh, without some type of bra on it, uh, it gets far too hot. Um, so this actually allows you to uh, lower the windows. It's raining right now, but that comes right off, and you can do that on both sides and get a great breeze, uh, and the bugs don't come in. 
So this is a, uh, a very good addition to, uh, to any sprinter, uh, but we found it was great for camping uh, without getting bugs inside and keeping the van very cool. Um, it's a great device. So a standard sprinter comes with two batteries for the um, Mercedes part, so call that the driving part. Um, and those are both by Mercedes. And then it comes with two batteries mounted pretty much right under where that electrical plug is. So in the back, there's two batteries. Those batteries, unfortunately, and it comes with one 100 watt solar panel that sits in the roof. Um, that combination will result in failure unless you're plugged into an extension cord fairly quickly. Uh, after you stop driving, you have somewhere between four and eight hours to plug in, at which point your batteries will generally be depleted um, past 50%. When you discharge a battery past 50%, it is useless. Uh, if you do it a couple of times, you basically ruin the battery. And the batteries in Canadian dollars are about $600 each, so that's something you don't want to do. Um, so uh, we like the idea of being at a beach uh, and, and being able to have uh, ice in the uh, fr freezer or uh, you know, food cold. Um, so that was important to us. So we doubled the batteries. So underneath on the other side, there are two more batteries. So another $1,200 in batteries. Um, and then we added uh, solar panels. So there are four 100 watt solar panels on top. Um, this allows this vehicle to basically be autonomous um, the entire time. So we traveled for six weeks um, across the US and down in Mexico and never had any problem. We never actually had to drive the van. At one point we were stopped for a week uh, and we were totally self-sufficient. Freezer on, fridge on, uh, using whatever lights we wanted, watching TV at night, uh, and no problem with the batteries. So those are two pretty important upgrades. The other upgrade is if you see the black cover at the front, that is a, uh, a rain cover. So the standard uh, Airstream install has a vent that has a rain sensor. Uh, you will find that it will close very quickly, uh, which is great because uh, rain doesn't get in. With that vent, that hood cover on top, uh, you can actually pull air in even if it is rainy. Um, so that's kind of a nice addition as well. Uh, other than that, there is a uh, a cell booster, that antenna at the back is a cellular, sorry, a Wi-Fi booster. Uh, so you'll find that we boost Wi-Fi signal. We can pick up Wi-Fi signal from about a kilometer away. Uh, and there's a small antenna uh, right in the center of the screen there. That's a cellular boost antenna. Um, both of those are pretty important additions. You'll find out if you drive across uh, Canada, the US, your cellular service will get down to zero bars. Uh, this will bump it one or two bars. Uh, and you'll find that unless you park in a McDonald's or in a Starbucks, uh, you're not going to get Wi-Fi. Whereas this device allows you to get Wi-Fi from a, about a kilometer away or more. Uh, so those are some additions that have we found very, very useful. Sometimes we found that we carried a lot more stuff than you might imagine in the Sprinter. Um, and there wasn't enough room in the Sprinter. Um, and so to have a matching trailer is an awesome thing. Uh, you can basically put pretty much whatever you want in here. The, the <clears throat> Sprinter is capable of towing 5,000 pounds. Uh, this is a 1,500-pound trailer. Uh, sorry, maybe 2,500 pounds. Um, and it, you don't even feel it behind you. Uh, I did actually put a, um, an anti-sway device on it, uh, and I did put brakes on it because we did a fair amount of mountain uh, tours. Um, but uh, you really don't notice it behind you. You do lose about three... Uh, kilometers per hundred so it costs you about three kilometers sorry three liters per hundred or, uh, by towing the trailer and that's at 75 miles an hour so this is the trailer um, again it's been upgraded there's brakes have been added so they you know a trailer this small doesn't normally have brakes on it um, so we have brakes uh, and an automatic brake um, um, so if this attaches and this pulls out uh, there's an automatic brakes, it puts the brakes on the trailer. This is the trailer, uh, brand new tires, um, because we took it down to uh, Mexico. Um, uh, LED lights on the back, uh, obviously it has the uh, parks ready for that. Uh, two mountain bikes mount here, uh, fat bikes <clears throat> or regular mountain bikes. And then the rest of it is outfitted with um, um, tie downs so that you can basically organize everything very well. 
So we tended to carry a five gallon propane tank, or sorry, 20 gallon propane tank, and one of those um, uh, fire pits from Costco, uh, which was great. Underneath here is, I would highly encourage everybody to, uh, to grab one of these. It's a, um, an instant tent. So in about, it's raining right now, and in about three minutes, I can set that tent up, uh, put the heater in it, and it's, uh, it's very warm inside. This is a stand-up paddle board. I am a kite boarder, so normally there would be uh, inflatable kites all the way across here, and kiting gear, uh, hoses, uh, and plug-ins, a uh, spare tire um, for the trailer is down there. Uh, past the mountain bike. Um, and then I installed the uh, battery, and then I put lights in it, because it's if you come into a trailer at night, uh, it's not very bright. Uh, so this allows you to see. Uh, these ones come on on a switch here, which is here. Uh, and right now the trailer's not plugged into anything, uh, but those lights allow you to see. And then here, if it was dark out and there was motion, that light up there, uh, and then this light here, would come on and illuminate. Um, I also put a, uh, a fan in here and then a hood over it. Uh, so that it does stay, um, it doesn't have a trailer smell, put it that way. Uh, and then you'll see vents on the outside, and they come into here, so there's some outside vents. So that if you do have a Vespa in here, or gasoline in here, you're never going to smell it even if you spill, spill a bit. It's going to um, uh, be cleaned out. And then the floor, um, I painted the floor with an anti-stick, so it's a bit dirty, but you'll see uh, this is a very good surface um, that allows you to sweep it out. And this wheel chalk, if you don't want to carry a motorcycle, this entire wheel chalk can be removed. So that's the trailer that comes with the Airstream. Uh, it's been it's been awesome to be able to. Uh, uh, we would basically use this in the Vespa. Uh, we would pull into a city like Nashville or Quebec City, um, park a little on the outskirts. So in Nashville, we park across the river, and in Quebec City, we change and park by the St. Lawrence, and then we would take the Vespa tour the city. Uh, the nice part about a Vespa is you never have to ask for parking. Uh, you pretty much have Rockstar parking wherever you want. Uh, so that's the trailer. Uh, it's a Neo 2017 6x12 trailer. Awesome trailer.